diagnostics. Several anomalies detected. Multiple digital security breaches found within full jump routines. Full engine critically damaged. Hull integrity compromised. Analysis confirms discrepancies between the mission clock and the apparent advanced state of the solar system. We are receiving no communication signals from Earth. Likelihood of ongoing survival stands at approximately 7.67%. Activating Marduk survival protocols. New mission objective established. Ensure humanity's survival by finding a habitable exoplanet. Urgent issues requiring immediate attention. Increase food production output. Restore hull integrity. Administrator, a new request awaits your attention. Welcome back to some more Ixion as we continue our journey and in the previous episode we made a tiny miscalculation which may have led to the death of humanity and we are now back in our own solar system as we can see we can only currently see planet earth and the Ur Shabi and let's just go back inside and check out what the crew want so the crew are asking questions about the state of Earth. Munchy behavioral algorithms predict a decrease in productivity of 22% if these questions go unanswered. So we're going to send an expedition to Earth naturally to try and figure out what has gone wrong. And you may have noticed that the moon has broken apart. The crew are aware of this and many rumors are spreading throughout the station. I will have to make an official statement. Well, I don't really know what's gone wrong. So I am just going to blame it on the crew and tell them to get to work even harder. Yep, it was your fault. So we've incurred a minus 5% trust penalty for that one, but I don't think it really makes much of a difference what we say at this point. We are in trouble. So we've got that probe. Let's send out the science ship to planet Earth first, and we will send a probe out to try and find some steel. In fact, Looks like there's a high concentration of steel in our local asteroid belt there, so we're going to send the probe out to investigate that because we need steel and iron. And in this episode, that is going to be our major focus. So let's just unpause things. Uh, food. Uh, people are starving in Sector 1. Uh, that should actually resolve itself. We have got enough food. I've actually got 73 in stock and all of our lovely insect farms are still working. So, no signals have been received from Earth. The oceans seem to have evaporated and the surface temperature has risen significantly since the Tarquin was last in orbit. Atmospheric readings indicate the presence of strong dust storms and dangerously high levels of carbon dioxide, radiation and microplastics. The blue planet will never again deserve its name. So I'm going to investigate the headquarters because that only takes one cycle. So we'll do that first. And as you can see our cargo storages are basically empty. We need steel desperately. and. Previously, we was researching the batteries tier one. We really need to get the cryogenics center researched. And of course, we need that steel mill researching. Now, our probe has discovered metal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send our mining ship out and I'm going to prioritize metal. There is also some ice amongst the asteroid system there as well, but we don't actually need that at the moment. So we're going to send the mining ship out and there it goes and as soon as that's mined some iron our cargo ship can ferry that back because that is of the highest priority at the moment okay the converted oil rig which the dalos used as its state-of-the-art headquarters is gone only a few material scraps remain scattered across the expanse of a dusty cracked earth there is no sign of survivors but we are going to get some steel back from that so next off we can investigate our family home 
or we can score the globe in search of survivors. Now, of course, I am going to send the science team out to go and recover my personal computer and my Nintendo Switch. That is, of course, of higher priority than scouring the Earth for any sign of survivors. And naturally, Molly is on board ship with me. She's sat next to me in the cockpit right now. I wouldn't have left her behind, so that's all good, but they do need to recover my Nintendo. So let's just assign one of them cargo bays to be able to collect the raw iron. And here we go, our cargo bay ship is coming back, and that is going to be coming back with some steel from the Dallas headquarters. So that goes in to storage, and as you can see here, our hull repair is it's has been switched on so that is going to use two steel every cycle just to keep this ship up and running we've sustained damage since doing the jump into hyperspace and at the moment all we can do is use steel to keep this ship and its hull integrity repaired the rest of the iron is going to go and finish off the crew quarters here which we didn't quite manage to get finished in the last episode but we have got iron coming in now so that's the most important thing and it is vital that in this episode we set up a steel works and get the production of iron off the ground we need to be mining and smelting iron ore because it's pretty much the one resource that we need most of all and we're pretty much out of it again so now one of the other things we need is carbon I need to be able to get carbon to be able to send out the mining probes and we do need some microchips as well so I've just switched some of these storages around we're probably going to need down to put down a couple more stockpiles as well okay what did they find well good news a huge crevice cuts through the ground where my home once stood there is no trace of civilization but they have found nine computer parts so that must be the Nintendo and my PC so that's all good now you can have a look around the globe and see if there's any <laughs> any survivors left but the good news is they did find my Nintendo switch so that's good in it mop so it's mop, mop. All right, okay <laughs> okay so the cargo ship is busy ferrying raw steel back from the asteroid so as our mining ship is mining all of the steel our cargo ship is bringing it back and here it comes in the door right now we'll see that's just going to unload with raw steel and there it goes so we've got no way of smelting that at the moment we need to be able to get all of the science back before we can research the steel works and how are we doing so we've got basically two cycles left before we can do anything else there so we'll just let that cargo ship continue to ferry stuff back and fortunately it's all quite local to us but I think the next thing we really need to do is collect that science from planet earth and once we've got the science we can then research the steel works so just half a cycle left as that bar fills up with the little magnifying glass there and we will have finished all of our missions on planet earth so let's just check that out that's now done and science has now been collected so after a long search we have found nothing but rubble no signs of life not even a corpse the lunaclism lunaclism seems to have caused a series of events that participated the collapse of the thermal industrial civilization earth beca has become a toxic and arid wasteland scarred by harsh winds and now more inhospitable than mars well that's not very good but what is good is we've got 149 polymer and I need polymer to be able to create the probes and we need to be able to send out as many probes as possible so we need to kind of prioritize getting that polymer back so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch some priorities around on our cargo ship so if you've ever played things like rim weld this is very similar and we're just going to make this medium priority in fact we don't need ice bringing back at all at the moment we don't need food or helium um we don't need silicon either but 
Okay, so our cargo ship will automatically bring back the polymer. So, mission reports from an expedition to work are being discussed among the crew. The thought of having lost loved ones left behind has destroyed the morale of many of them. The symptoms of this trauma have now been correlated under the medical designation Dead Earth Sickness, which gives them a minus one permanent debuff. That's not good. And this next mission is to collect 500 cryo pods, which we will do. That's a long term goal. We need to get as many as we can on the ship and start rebuilding as best we can. And the only way to do that is trying to find these cryo pods. We can't reproduce humanity on this ship. We really need to speed that process up by defrosting anyone who was left over. So I'm going to switch the probe launcher on now as it's brought some polymer back to automatically keep creating search probes and our science is ticking down. So now I've got a bit of polymer in, I'm going to prioritize bringing back iron and there's a load of that stuff on planet Earth that we can bring back. So our cargo ship's going to go and grab that and I'm just going to leave the science ship to tick down, grab the rest of that science. At the moment, it's just doing its recycle run. And then once that restarts, we'll research, finish researching the batteries and we can get onto the steelworks, which is the next priority and the big priority for this episode. So we've almost got another search probe ready. There we go. So there's another search probe ready. We've got iron coming in now. This is all good. I'm going to need to construct some more stockpiles kind of we're gonna need the space so I think we can get on with that so we could put them there now we did research the batteries which I could place a battery down um, before we build that let's just see how much space a battery takes up I think that's just like a three by three yep so we could put that just above our accommodation okay maybe if we put it in the middle I don't think we can do much with the road around it um, and then we'll get some cargo base storage down and something like that now uh, I actually I'm gonna move the battery back one towards the other road there and just save us a space so we haven't wasted any materials that just goes back in storage and I'll get rid of this road and then I can keep everything a little bit more symmetrical and save some space Let's just slow things down for a moment okay so the batteries are going to be used anytime we move the Tarquin ship power goes down and the solar panel goes off so we're going to need battery power that's definitely going to be a thing and although we don't need it just yet we are going to need it and each section of the ship that we have open is going to require some battery power so i think we'll get rid of this road just here and we can get three more cargo bays down in a line there and that should just about do it now naturally when we research upgrades we will be able to increase the amount of space that the storage capacity has and let's just put a road down there so that's building the battery what do you guys want okay now they're asking if within 10 cycles we can open up another section of the ship and I'm gonna deny that request because things are working okay at the moment the minute that we end up splitting the crew up we're going to have things all over the place it's just for the time being to avoid more accidents i'm just going to concentrate everything on this side of the ship and we'll wait until the next episode before we go next door i mean at the moment things aren't broke and if it ain't broke don't fix it so let's get the cryogenic center research no let's get the steel mill researched and then go on to cryogenics so if we can get them two things done then we might be able to think about going on to another section of the ship so 
We can now send our science vessel out to investigate the ore shabby and find out what went wrong there as we've managed to do everything on planet Earth. Our cargo ship keeps ferrying stuff and things back towards the ship. We're getting plenty of iron come in now, so that's all good. Gonna need that. Pretty sure the steel mill is gonna take quite a bit of iron. So let's send out another probe. And again, got a high spike of iron there. Gonna try and find, there we go, unidentified. See what that is, that's probably a planet. And I guess it's far enough away, it's probably Jupiter. So we'll suss out what's going on over there. Okay, our sensors have detected the ore shabby. The ship is broken in two and is not transmitting any signals. The phrase, whoever helps Dalos in its enemy is an enemy of humanity and has been dubbed in large letters on the wreck of the ore shabby. Mummified bodies have been attached to its hull. Oh dear, it's not good at all. So we'll gather the remaining resources and I guess we're starting to piece parts of the puzzle to back together. Now obviously that time jump has significantly allowed time to pass so we have missed things and I guess we've come back at a point in the future. Okay, so we've got a couple more things here. We can put cryopods in this one. And I'm just going to assign alloy to that one for the time being. At the moment, we're not gathering helium or silicon. Uh, that final one, yeah, we're going to change that so it gathers raw steel. And that can come in from our mining operation. Um, and this final one... Let's reassign that one to, uh, we'll, we'll sign it to more raw iron. So we've got plenty of raw iron. Our research is still going on for our steel mill. And our probe has uncovered Jupiter. I did suspect it was Jupiter. Okay, so we can gather food and a little bit of metal back from the ore shabby. So I'll stick that on, but I'm going to put it on its lowest priority because we've got plenty of the insect farms going on and I'm sure everybody's pretty happy with the Bill Gates special burgers that are coming out on the ship as we speak so I don't need to go and gather the food as a priority so we've got another probe ready let's send it out see what else we can pick up a signal um, we got here seems like we got high concentration of metal and maybe some other stuff just there so I'm gonna constantly keep on scanning our surroundings we need to scan as much as possible figure out what we have okay so the steel is all full I'm sure we're gonna use that up soon I'll switch this one round so we can bring back iron and as soon as we've researched the steel mill, I'm sure we're going to use up quite a chunk of that iron to build it in the first place. Okay, we're doing all right for power. Managed to get 100 power. Population-wise, close to the 200 mark. And I think we've got enough space for approximately 250. Yeah, 240 housing capacity. Stability is at 1, so we get the minus 1 debuff from the Earth sickness. I don't know why they're all upset. I mean, we did recover the Nintendo Switch, so they should be happy, really. But Okay, we have researched the steel mill. Next, I want to open the cryogenics center. We need to start defrosting any humans that we come across we need to increase the crew i want to increase the crew before we open up another section i think you can jump ahead a little bit too quickly in this and steel mill well it's quite expensive to build ideally i want to stick it down here i could put it that way i think 
we're gonna have to stick it this way around. I don't think we can. Well, it would fit. Yeah. Decisions, decisions. Although that's quite a bit of useful space on this section. I think, I think we'll put it down here. It's right above all of the cargo storage for the raw materials, so it's not very far for them to travel. And we're not really wasting too much space. Now it is going to cost a couple of computer parts to be able to build that, and we currently don't have any computer chips in storage. So we're going to have to prioritize the cargo ship to go and grab that so the steel mill can get constructed. Okay, uh, sent out another probe. So, just want a strong signal. Strong signal of steel just there. Uh, uh, something really strong just here. I'm guessing that's a planet. At the moment, I'm mining plenty of iron, so I'm not so bothered about uncovering iron. More bothered about, I'll go for that one because it seems like there might be some cryopods in that area. So, yeah, I'm more bothered about getting the cryopods back. Um, okay, we really need to change around some priorities and get them computer chips back from Earth. So. We just go to cargo and up the priority. We'll get them nine computer chips back. As soon as they're back, they can finish off constructing the steel mill and we can start producing iron. And we need that because the hull is taking damage and we are constantly using iron just to be able to keep our ship afloat in space. So there we go, we got the computer chips back, that was prioritised, and now we can begin construction on the steel mill. And it's quite a large structure that one. Almost researched cryogenics. Uh, looks like our mining ship's coming back for repair. Okay, I guess we can send another probe out see what else we can find. Search around the outer rings. Try and find Venus and Mercury. They should be quite close to us. Um, just really want to find a strong signal. Hmm. Somewhere around here. Uh, oh, that's unidentified. I'm going to guess that that's Mars. It's a bit too far away from the sun. Yeah, I can't find Mercury or Venus at the moment. We will get there though, we will get there. Okay, so the steel works is just getting constructed there. That's good news. And each time we send out a probe, it automatically grabs polymer. Uh, Medical bays, all good, everything's good. Okay, we have researched the cryogenic center. What to research next? Now we could do, well, we're obviously gonna need a polymer refinery. We're gonna need the electronics factory, but thinking if we unlock one of these memorials here, it will give us a permanent plus one stability to the crew. And a happy crew is a hard working crew, so to, I, I think we'll, we'll invest some research and get a memorial done. This will keep our crew a little bit happier and less accidents are likely to happen and harder work should be done because as things stand, we haven't had any accidents as of yet and that's largely because we haven't split the crew in half and put half and half on each section. They're all concentrated on this small bit here. So that is why management of space, certainly in the early game, is definitely crucial. And one of the reasons why I opt not to go into a second section of the ship straight away. We just try and get everything up and running. 
Once we've got the cryogenic center up and running and we start defrosting people, we'll have more crew and then we can think about opening up a new section of the ship. So I think it's a little bit of a red herring that they ask you to open up a section of the ship so early. We are picking up a Dolos emergency frequency broadcasting from the facility Outer Hope. Dolos protocol dictates that in the event of a major system failure, administrators must contact the nearest Dolo site immediately. Outer Hope Station is likely to have both the materials and expertise required to repair the damage that the Vol engine has sustained. Okay, well, we'll do our best to locate that frequency. As you can still see here, our steel works is just going ahead. It's grabbing the raw steel and it's 15 raw steel into 15 iron. That's just going to continue to work. So we have got our production of iron and that's great. And of course, looks like we've uncovered Uranus. A... Uh, a very windy planet is Uranus. <laughs> um, but let's head on out to Mars before we check out Uranus. <laughs> oh dear, I'm just a kid, aren't I? Uh, um, right. And uh, <laughs> I was going to say, we we'll send a probe out to Uranus, but we've already, <laughs> we've already probed Uranus. Oh, there's a strong signal coming from there. Stop it, James. Stop it. <laughs> oh dear. Um, so, things are ticking along nicely. Looks like our science centre is just doing some recycling, so that's shut down for a couple of cycles at the moment. Population-wise, ah, the cryogenic centre, we need that down. We don't actually have any cryopods, but I want that up and running. We need that up and running, so kind of thinking I know we're wasting a couple of squares there but put it down in the bottom corner um, get rid of that road just put it a little bit closer that will do nicely so as soon as we get some cryopods coming in we can start adding to the crew and then we can open a second section of the ship so fortunately, that's just going to cost steel to get up and running. And we're opening that a little bit early because we haven't actually discovered any cryopods yet. But we're going to need it. Okay. Uh, polymer is kind of running down. But... Okay, so yeah, we could override the locks. That costs one computer part to do that. So we definitely need to keep hold of one computer part at the very least just remember that um, because we've got no way of producing computer parts so to open that second section that is something that we need to do and okay hull integrity is good trust in their captain is good as well of course you've got to trust me I mean I am the man for the job. Okay. Um, what's happening out here? Okay, our science ship has arrived at Mars. Okay, an old disused complex named Reach's facility has been located on the surface of Mars. The derelict UN-owned facility is covered in almost entirely by Martian sand. Existing Delos clearance codes can be used to interact with the complex systems. Caution is advised that the weight of the sand exceeds the structure's load-bearing capacity. So we will, of course, the only option to us is to use the Delos clearance codes to try and get in there. So we do need to be careful that facility is ready to collapse. And it looks like we've discovered the outer hope. So that was something that we need to be able to get to. Send out another probe. See what else we can discover. Kind of seen a little bit of a bounce. What I really need to find is more cryopods. Um, 
It's looking like a fairly strong signal just there. We'll send it out, see what we can find. So, okay, cryos, cryogenic center is up and running. That's good, that's good. And as soon as we get some cryopods, we will start adding to the population. And they're almost done on Mars, so let's just wait and see what the science team finds down there. We'll just speed things up, see what they discover. Okay. So the codes briefly reacted the base's defense system due to the facility's state. They are fortunately overloaded and are now offline. The team of the Falkart did not sustain any losses. So we will um, inspect the scientific study center. That's only going to take one cycle to do. And I think really what I want to find is we want science. We definitely need science. We're out and... I need research to be done so that'll be done quick and then we can go on and investigate that signal from the outer hope I think it was called and oh, it looks like we got some cryopods I didn't notice that they'd actually come in but there goes a few just down into our cryogenics lab they are going to get defrosted and hopefully we'll get some more workers back and as things stand we do have plenty of space for them we're currently just at close to 200 crew and I've got enough for I think it was like 240 crew members so all is good we'll let that population increase before we consider opening up the next section of the ship. Okay, and it looks like they've completed the science down on Mars. Okay, we managed to locate uh, and extract a number of encrypted data files from the center's digital archive. During the final stages of the extraction, our perimeter team discovered a wall on the verge of collapse. They warned us before it gave way and sand flooded the area. No serious, it's okay. So we, we didn't incur any injuries. Just gonna grab that science and we'll bring that back, just speed things up and then we will send our science vessel on to the outer hope and investigate that next signal. And Looks like we're going to get a little bit of steel back from that and some cryopods. And let's send our science vessel out towards the Outer Hope. And we've already got a cargo ship on its way to bring them back. So let's send out another probe. Just keep on sending out probes into space wherever we get these spikes. Um, yeah. I'll send it out, have a look for some more steel. Make sure we keep that coming in. Go and mine some more asteroids. So that is all good. We're kind of waiting for our research to come in. So there we go. So we're getting 15 iron back from 15 raw steel. So it's kind of like a one for one basis and I want to send out some more probes so we keep on getting that coming back in but still we're kind of doing all right for and there we go our technology tree has just researched I forget what we've researching was it the memorials okay um polymer or electronics both of them are kind of important so We'll just do electronics and that is good. Now I don't know whether I'm going to be able to fit either of them factories in this section. So we could put a memorial down. Now that will cost us two computer chips and we've got four. We do need to keep one computer chip back to be able to access another part of the ship. But 
I guess this would give us plus one to our satisfaction bonus and I really want to keep that as high as we possibly can so I guess we could fit it in down here I mean there's only so much we can do in this area and we've pretty much compacted quite a lot into this section it's already going to be our main producer of food and steel and cryogenics as well so I'll stick that there we'll delete that road coming across the front and we're only kind of wasting one one little bit and I think with the rest of this section of the ship we'll, we'll think about adding a little bit more crew quarters it's just vital that we don't use up all of them computer chips because currently we can't produce them okay um, uh, what can we do let's have a look let's have a look I guess we can bring a road coming up around the back here and crew is now at 213 more cryopods are coming in so we we are going to need to think about more accommodation for them at least in a temporary scale anyway um, our science ship has almost reached the outer hope there and we've got another probe ready so let's send another probe out see where we can find some big spikes to go and investigate that was something there um, there we go send that out there big spike of unknown and we're almost at the outer hope let's just speed things up see what this strong signal is going to tell us okay Dallas emergency signal is broadcasting from these coordinates it originates from the research station the outer hope outer hope is surrounded by wreckage and debris from a past battle broken equipment and frozen bodies float around the station okay that doesn't sound good it sounds like a scene from event horizon so let's investigate the outer area that's going to take five cycles to do and oh, looks like our memorial is almost built there and this is going to be a good thing the plus one satisfaction that's going to really help the boost the crew's morale and the better the crew are the better they perform so far we haven't had any accidents we haven't had any strikes and yeah we just want this plus one stability rather in this section stability is definitely an important thing and at the moment trust is at plus 2.2 percent hull integrity we're all looking good we're looking good for power we are looking good for hull stability and can probably fit in another memorial down there at some point but we'll wait and hang back to do that because i think we're going to need some more crew quarters so yeah what we are 240 capacity 227 so even though i do plan to open up another section i think it might be wise if we perhaps add another mess hall Where can we fit that one in uh, perhaps just here yeah i think that'll do nicely and we will also add some more crew quarters along the top here and that last little square that we've got left I probably might reserve for something like another memorial to just link all of that together and anyone coming out of cryo stasis can get accommodation straight away and yeah um, we bring that 
down like so. We could fit some more batteries. And that'd be under maintenance. Yeah, we could put some more batteries down. We could fit in another two. That would definitely keep us going for quite a while if we had to move the space station. And let's just switch that road around. Move that like so. And yeah, I think, you know, within this last small section, we could fit one more memorial. I don't think that's big enough to be able to fit in an electronic center or a polymer center. And we can't expect to produce everything in one section of the ship. So like you can see there, the, even having a second steel mill in here would, yeah, it wouldn't be a good idea. So we're pretty much out of space. Okay, we can launch another probe. Uh, that looked quite a strong signal. Just really want to uncover all of the planets again. And I'm not sure why when you come back to the solar system you can no longer see them, but... Um, I mean, somewhere out here we should have Pluto, Neptune as the outer planets. Uh, so something just here. Okay. Go. Okay. Don't think we've uncovered Saturn yet as well. Speed things up a little bit. We've just got one cycle to go on the out on the outer hope research. Let's figure out what we get back from that. I do believe Eden mentioned something about upgrades to our engines. So, okay, here we go. The battle seems to have been made up of multiple engagements with debris from conflicts mostly consistent of wrecked shuttles. Some of these destroyed ships bear the insignia of the UN, though the majority of Dallas embedded. Yeah, okay, so of course. Britain is not part of the UN, so it was nothing to do with us. You know, it was all of the, it, it was all of the, it was Brussels that did that. Um, so, fortunately, the UK are all out of all of that. When I say fortunately, there was no one left alive anyway. But there you go. <laughs> okay. Um, oh dear. Right. Um, population is going up. Housing is also going up, so that's all good. So we now we do have 27 non-workers, and as we defrost all of these people, some of them are not able to work, which is not great. But I guess the non-workers carry on. They can go. Well, I mean, we should just eject them out of the ship. I mean, you know, if you want to be on the ship, I think you should work. So if we've defrosted any children or anything like that, that are of no good. I think that they're just a drain on resources. <laughs> so we should just be able to put them out of the airlock. But instead of that, we've got 27 useless people on the ship. Now, can we find Venus or Mercury? That looked like a high spike there. Um, so I'm sure at some point we're going to be able to figure out a way how to turn workers or non-workers into workers, perhaps open some sort of school. But for the time being, we've got some useless unemployed people. I mean, of all of the people left in humanity, you know, it was the non-workers that they that got frozen. I mean, how did that happen? Seriously. Why was it the unemployed bums got froze and, uh, you know, we ended up losing, you know, the top 1%. I mean, everybody that I should be uncovering here should be a hard, valuable resource. But no, it seems that quite a lot of the people we are defrosting are just useless. I suppose in reality, 
it was the UN that was left in the end, so it doesn't surprise me that most of them cryopods have non-workers in. I mean, you know, when you think about it, it's actually pretty realistic, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, why save the hard workers? Let's just let's just support the non-workers. They they can live on. Oh dear. I'm going to lose some subscribers if I can't keep on with this. Just just keep it to gaming, James. Come on. <laughs> right, we got a high spike just on the inner side there. So I suspect that's probably Venus. Venus was her name. Let's see what we find there. And one more cycle on the outer Hope ship here. And we will get back some more science. Ah, oh, dear me. There we go. It's completed a task. We need to collect all of this science. And uh, I'm just going to let that tick down a bit so we can continue with our research. And then we'll figure out what else they found inside the ship. See what the UN left us. Okay. Oh, uh, so we have the Outer Hope black box, so, and we have 25 cryopods ready to be defrosted. Now, with any luck, because these are the Dallas cryopods, they'll actually be workers, but, you know, the UN were present at the time, so, you know, I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to cross my fingers. <laughs> Get my hopes up on the outer hope. Oh, stop it, James. Right. You see, this is why I end up editing most of my videos down to less than um, 30 minutes. Should probably end up cutting this stuff out. <laughs> okay. Um, research. We're at 62% on the tech lab. Looks like we've got our mining ship just coming in for repair there, so that's just currently down for a second. And our population is starting to get up there now. So, up to 30 non-workers. Wow. I mean, you know, when you take it, I mean, that's like 15% of my ship is just not working, you know? It's just, no wonder humanity ended. <laughs> Oh. I mean, it is pretty realistic though, isn't it? I mean, it, it, you know, it, if you think about it really, as daft as it sounds, that's actually pretty realistic that uh, that, that is how it went. <laughs> uh, oh, we got Venus is uncovered. Fantastic. So, and um, I did uncover Mercury by the looks of it. We have got something that just doesn't have a magnifying glass over it. We've uncovered Saturn as well. So, now, Pluto would be a thing. That's one more that we need to find. But, is it a planet anymore? I mean, let me know down in the comments below. Do you think, it, do you think it, we should be able to find that as a planet? There is arguments to say that it isn't anymore. Um, high concentration. I'm not interested in ice. There was some hydrogen there. Um, just starting to not find the strong signals. I guess I'll send something out there. But it looks like it's a concentration of ice. Okay, technology nearly researched, so I think this was the electronics production facility that we were researching. I don't think I'm really going to have any space for that, but we could do the polymer refinery or the Outer Hope research. I'm going to actually research the Outer Hope black box. Um, that might be more use to us. And yeah, I mean, as you can see there, that's the computer factory. Uh, we wouldn't have been able to fit it in. Well, I guess 
might have been able to fit it in, but we chose to go down a different route and I will produce polymer and electronics on the next section of the ship. Like I say, we can't produce everything on this section of the ship. But I'm fairly happy with how this has gone. Today's priority was to get steel production up and running and we haven't lost one member of the crew despite having 15% non-workers um <laughs> we've we've still not managed to lose anybody so that's a good thing a uh science ship uh what did we send the science ship out to do um i can't remember but send a probe out um yeah we've already probed uranus pluto pluto it's got to be out around the outer i reckon that's going to be there it's going to be a hydrogen one I, I, if i had to guess hydrogen or ice planet i suppose in theory in furthest planet from the sun And from some of the most recent photos that we got, that would confirm as much that Pluto is indeed big ice rock. Um, yeah, the spikes, it's just getting a little bit more difficult to find stuff and things, I guess. A little bit of a concentration of iron ore there. There's a spike. Okay. Yep, we'll send it out just there. What could that be? So close to Earth. Not for Mercury, we got Venus. Am I forgetting one? Probably am. I do enjoy space. That's one of the things that I do spend a lot of time on YouTube watching. I have enjoyed all of the new information coming in on the uh, James Webb telescope. It's been pretty fascinating stuff coming in, even though a lot of it goes over my head. I still think it's great, and um, yeah, I mean, I know I make gaming content, but that is one of the things that I will switch off at the end of the night on and catch up on some uh, science-based YouTube and stuff, so do enjoy all of that and even though 2022 has probably been the poorest year I can think of in terms of computer games it's definitely been a great year for science and uh, what we're learning about the universe so I guess we're kind of just hanging on. I think this is kind of getting to the limit of what we can do in this episode. We have got a population of 250. We're at like 285. So we're definitely going to have to think about putting a pause on cryopods or building a few more houses, which I don't really want to do. I think having 300 crew on this section of the ship might might be pushing it a little bit and eventually I'll probably end up dismantling some of these buildings um, to spread the crew out a little bit more but that's precisely why I didn't open up that second section of the ship too early on I think we would have just spread everybody a little bit too thin stressed everybody out but now things are up and running I think we're definitely going to be in a good state to be able to open that next section of the ship in the next episode. So as always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons. I hope you're enjoying Ixion. I'm certainly enjoying this one. It's definitely a lot of micromanagement and I do enjoy these city builder games and managing your space. So in the next episode, we'll get the second section of the ship opened up and we'll investigate Uranus. It's definitely a top priority 
and uh, we'll we'll in explore a few more of these planets. Hopefully, we can get the Vol engine repaired and move on out of the solar system. But as you can see, well, the moon is a little bit of a mess at the moment, and our survival hopes have gone up a little bit. We've got the black box now, so hopefully we can get the engines repaired. We need to get the ship repopulated and we will continue in the next episode. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.